everybody. How we doing? Welcome into First Take. Appreciate you hanging with us. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam. Gentlemen, good day. We have a lot to discuss today. We do. Let's do it. All right. Let's get right to it. So yes, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's go. All right, let's get into it. Took a 2 nothing series lead behind an NBA single game record 25 threes and an NBA record 18 threes in the first half. Ten different Cavs players hit at least one three-pointer last night. That led by J.R. Smith, who hit 7 of 13 from behind the arc. Stephen A., can they keep this pace up? Nope, they cannot. They don't shoot that well. I mean, they're a good shooting team. There's no question about it. But 25 three-pointers is 25 three-pointers. You're not going to have that on too many occasions. They deserve a lot of credit for what they did against Atlanta last night. Atlanta clearly appeared overwhelmed. They got annihilated, uh, embarrassed in every way uh, that you can imagine. Uh, it, was it was pretty bad watching them go up against Cleveland. They clearly appear to be overmatched. Um, as, as a result, again, they might be on the verge of being swept, even though I'll still give them enough respect to say it's possible they can steal a game on their home floor for the home crowd. But this series is over in five at the latest, a possible sweep. And it's simply because uh, LeBron James and what he can do on a basketball court, the fact that he has the kind of, uh, of presence that, afford, that forces you to pay so much attention to him He's in a way, he's, a, he's got the ability to create open shots for other people. Kevin Love is playing well. J.R. Smith always seems to be on fire whenever he goes up against the Atlanta Hawks. And, of course, Kyrie Irving is doing his thing as well. Uh, I don't think that they could hit 25 three-pointers as a record for a reason because it just simply does not happen. So I don't expect them to be able to duplicate this kind of performance. But it doesn't negate the fact that they deserve a boatload of credit for accomplishing what they accomplished. No question about that. So, Stephen A., would you agree with me? We're seeing a very different new-look Cleveland Cavaliers, the Cavaliers who decided after last year's finals, if we can't beat them, join them, as in Golden State, as in yeah. let's try to out Golden State, Golden State, because this year, sort of quietly in the, in the regular season, the Cleveland Cavaliers were third in three-point attempts to Houston and Golden State and second in makes to Golden State. It's a new day, new dawn, new way. And well, yeah, go ahead. Well, you can look at it that way. I wouldn't say that about their three-point shooting, even though it's up significantly. What I would say to you, Skip, is this. Tyron Liu told me the day he got off of the job and he sat down with me for an interview, he said the objective is to up the tempo, increase the pace, because by doing so, it's going to create open shots for Kyrie and Kevin Love. By virtue of them getting additional open shots and you now having to be incredibly concerned about the big three, it's opening up more shots for the J.R. Smiths of the world and others. And as a result, it's just a residual impact that ultimately, ultimately guys are able to feed off of the fact that you now are playing at a faster okay. pace. And I that's what helped matters. That's what Tyron Lewis was aiming for all along. But let me throw a number at you. I didn't realize this until this morning when it sank into me just how hot they have been from three through their first six playoff games. The previous record in yeah. the NBA history of the playoffs for the first six games of a playoffs was 73 point makes, 7 0 makes. As of right now, Cleveland has 97. That they have obliterated the previous record by 27 makes through three. Through, I'm sorry, through six games. Are you with me? 27 more makes. They have. Yep. They have destroyed it. They are off the charts making threes. They are beyond Golden State. Obviously, Golden State hasn't had staff except for a half and a half. Their Golden State's now at 69. So they were one short of the record without very much staff. But the point is, everybody's making threes including, for the most part, LeBron James, except they have 97 makes. We know LeBron's sort of an iffy three-point shooter, hot and cold, mostly cold. But, but LeBron, in those first six games, has had an 0-for-3 game, a 1-for-6 game, and a 1-for-6 game. So despite those three games from LeBron, everybody else is making so many threes that they have shattered the record 97-70 to 70 through the first six games. Now back to Molly's question. Can they keep it up? Well, we're, we're starting to get a body of work here, regular season and postseason, that is suggesting they can keep it up. 
that they have so many three-point shooters that maybe they can. But you know and I know, we've been doing this for a long time. What's the oldest expression since the three-point line came in to play in the NBA? You live and you die by the three. Occasionally, but very occasionally, Golden State dies by the three. Remember the one game they lost at San Antonio this year? Remember that one? Two for 19 were a mm -hmm. combined Steph and Clay from three. So if, if, you know, if you go two for 19, those two, I got a shot. My Spurs got a shot. Now, how often is that going to happen? Rarely, if ever. But that was the rare night, and my guys won a game at home, barely, even when they were shooting two for 19. So my point is, at some point in the playoffs, and it might be a key game, all these guys will be a little bit cold, and they will get a lot frustrated, and then can you overcome it by making twos? Well, I think this team is so loaded, especially against Eastern Conference talent and, and opposition, that, yeah, they can overcome it, but, but the key is... Remember how hard you got on J.R. Smith last year in the, play, in the uh, finals? Remember how he disappeared and you were doing APB for J.R.? This team sort of goes as yeah. he goes by, like he's the fire starter to me. And last night, when he's making, what was it in the first half, six out of ten, it's just crazy stuff where, listen, there's only one other human on this planet who can occasionally get as hot as Steph and Clay often get. They, they're, they're often hot, like, like crazy hot. JR can get as hot as they get, but it's, it's not as consistent. It's not as routine. So what about that night when JR goes one for 12 and the rest of the team can't feed off him? Then we find out what this team is made of from two-point range. And, and I'm pretty sure they're pretty good. But, but that's what's going to happen here because you can get a little too dependent as you well know, you can fall in love with the three, and it can fall out of love with you for no apparent reason. You just suddenly can't, you just go cold for psychological reasons you can't really explain. It'll be interesting to see what happens when that happens, and it well could be game three at Atlanta. Often after these kind of outbursts, you come out, you miss your first two, and everybody says, uh-oh, we, we, we don't got it tonight. You know, like it left well, us, whatever that feeling was. Here's the reason why they tend to struggle when J.R. Smith tends to struggle. Because he's out there to shoot the basketball. And I don't care if he's 0 for 10 or 10 for 10. The ball is going yep. up an 11th time. Yep. That's who he is. I mean, he's going to shoot the basketball. Yep. And so it's, it's incredibly beneficial to them when he's making those shots. Because then you can't ignore him and it opens things up for everybody else. But when he's missing them... It's a problem. And the one thing that I've got on JR about, and I'm glad he's made an effort to rectify it, is that he is not just a shooter. JR Smith can play. It's all right to put the ball on the floor sometimes. It's all right to go to the hole and potentially get fouled because he could go to the free throw line and make free throws. Yep. And it's something that he needs to do. Unfortunately, he's the kind of person that when he's missing his shots, he gets so demoralized that his entire game case in the past. The way he was hitting shots last night, Cleveland could beat Golden State. Yep. The problem could. is, I agree. In a seven-game series, you can rely on J.R. Smith to do it once or twice. You can't rely on him to do it three or four times or five times or anything like that. That's not who he is. He's a model of inconsistency in that regard. And as a result, they have the weapons to offset that. This time, whereas last year due to injuries, I agree. they didn't have that. Yeah. So it makes it for a very compelling and interesting matchup in the event that they meet Golden State. But at the same time, let's pump the brakes just a touch because as much as we respect the job that Stan Van Gundy has done and as much as we respect the job that Mike Budenholzer has done in Atlanta, Atlanta and Detroit are not exactly the quintessential litmus no. test for the Cleveland Cavaliers I in agree. terms of what they're going to face as things progress. Yep. Okay, but I do like their broader array of shooters, as you point out, than they had last year. Their key addition, trade deadline addition, Channing Fry. he only made one last Channing night. Fry. He's capable, as you well know, of making five or six in any big game. And he, he's yeah. a pretty big game shooter occasionally. And then, obviously, Kyrie can make them. Love can make them. Delhi can make them. De Delhi will make a few big threes for you. So you have an array of snipers with the single best in and out passer in the game in LeBron James. There's nobody better at seeing the floor, driving it, and dishing it cross court 
than LeBron James. To me, he gets them in three-point rhythm. There's no better team. I, I don't see anybody, and I give Ty Lu a lot of credit for this, Stephen A. They are really good at penetrating and spacing and finding the open shooter on the fly. They're the best at it. They're, they're, the, San Antonio used to be the best, but they don't do that anymore. They've changed, as you well know, to a two-point shooting Finding the open team. shooter on the fly? Yeah, on, on driving and finding dishing. Finding the open shooter yeah. on the fly? Yeah. I don't know if they're better than Golden State at that. I don't I'm not know. sure about that. No, on on because they're all spot ups. I don't know about I mean, that one. No, Steph is creating on his own. They're they're creating on their own. I'm talking about driving it in and kicking it. Nobody does it better than LeBron's team. I know exactly Last what you're talking classic. about. It well, was classic. I'm like just saying. Book. I think Steph. I well, nobody's better than LeBron at it. Yeah. But they uh, But collectively speaking, I think Golden State, whether it's a Clay one minute, uh, uh, you know, a Green the next, an Eagle Dollar the next, a Steph Curry the next, I think collectively they're better at Cleveland than they're better than Cleveland at that. Yeah. But to but me, LeBron is the best. When, when they're at their best, me. Steph's just creating on off the dribble, shooting threes, just bringing it up, shooting threes. That's okay. where they're lethal to me. And, yeah. That's and, true. and Cleveland can't yeah. do that. Right. Nobody can do that. All right. All right. So after the game.